Goff on his way. With Rory and Gary is our Olympic heavyweight gold medalist who took up boxing after going to see Rocky at the cinema. Thank goodness he couldn't get in to see Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. <laughs> Audrey Harrison. Right. With David and Jonathan is the spin king of our triumphant test squad who during the tour of Pakistan was responsible for over a thousand deliveries. That's on a par with Mike Gatting's pizza boy. <laughs> Ashley Giles. We kick off the show with our excuses round. David, Jonathan and Ashley, it's Manchester United's bald custodian, Fabian Bartes, for you. This is Lomas! There he was, keeping one out against West Ham earlier this season, but predictably, it's his ex-girlfriend, the supermodel Linda Evangelista, we're more interested in. The couple split up recently, but what reason did she give for dumping him, David's team? Before we get to that, can I just welcome Ashley to the show and say congratulations on your fantastic victory in Pakistan. Let's hear it yeah, for Ashley. Yeah, yeah. Because, and I don't know if you know this, Ashley, but David used to play a bit of cricket a long while ago. <laughs> one of my heroes. Very nice. Was he really one of your heroes? One of my yeah. heroes. What about Ian Botham, though? Was he a bigger hero? <laughs> he was a bigger oh, hero. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even like cricket. I'd heard of both of them, but this bloke, I still think they're just having a I mean, laugh. this bloke. <laughs> <laughs> but I did once sleep with a supermodel. Anyone else here shag a supermodel? <laughs> I don't know why I only look at Audley when I look over there. <laughs> I, I shagged Elle McPherson. Oh, yeah? Well, not the Elle McPherson. It was Louise McPherson. She used to work for the council. <laughs> Jonathan, I've shagged um, Sophie Dahl. Have you? Oh, no, sorry, Roald Dahl it was. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, right. <laughs> Did she realise that she'd actually been going out, not with the football at all, but with the uh, Bond villain, Donald Pleasance? <laughs> <laughs> and he was pretending to be a footballer as part of Manchester United's evil plan to take over the world. <laughs> they lived in Cheshire inside a mock Tudor volcano. <laughs> Isn't it that when she sat next to Posh in the players' wives' enclosure, she just felt fat? Maybe not. I mean, as Jonathan said. Like wives' enclosure. That's a very interesting answer. <laughs> they brought them round before the race. He's, he's thinking of one man and his dog again. I think so. Go, boy. Get, get, get away. <laughs> Barthez is a French gentleman, I believe. Yeah, Barthez. In the World Cup, he used to get kissed on the head, didn't he? He did. And is it right that when he went to Manchester United, he banned it? Because Teddy Sheringham gummed him all over. <laughs> while Dwight York tried to film it. <laughs> and Graham Lassau did absolutely nothing because he plays for Chelsea. <laughs> hey, Chelsea. Oh, 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 uh, to be honest, I don't think any of us really care because she broke Man United players' heart. It's not really... It's a, <laughs> it's a QPR fan that's not really destroyed me. So you're the QPR fan? <laughs> Still like Manchester, surely. It was just she was... What, too cold, wet, damp. Yeah, gray, I'll give you three um, points for that. Well, well done. Well, what a happy yeah. 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 Linda Evangelista put the blame fairly and squarely on the Manchester weather. Here's weatherman John Ketley. But we've seen the jet stream moving further south in recent months, and now we're seeing supermodel Linda Evangelista also moving further south. But a word of warning, the rainfall in Nice is just the same as Manchester. Bartes says he'll only take the field in black because apparently it brings good luck. It's actually a tradition at Old Trafford to have one of their number wear black and carry a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, Rory and Audley, it's a goalkeeper with a contrasting hairstyle for you, Arsenal and England's David Seaman. Here he is conceding that goal against Germany. Seaman trying to find a wall and Di Mahavan takes it and scores for Germany. An embarrassing goal for England from every angle. But 
inevitably it's his daft hairstyle we're more interested in. We'd like to know what is his excuse for wearing his hair in that ponytail. He gave three, but you just need one of them to get the points. Does he think his head is a horse's ass? <laughs> <laughs> we're on, on shaky ground here, aren't we? Talking about hair on this side of me. Aren't we, orderly? Well, because you've had your head recently ploughed, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know. Has he got any superstitions? Don't about his hairstyle. I'm not too sure about the hairstyle. It's a bit dodgy, but I'm not too Do you sure. Have any superstitions when you're boxing? I never have sex the day before I box. Do you ever have sex during a boxing match, George? <laughs> If I get caught with a good shot, I, I get a kind of orgasmic feeling. <laughs> um, it's all over the place, but, uh, no. Do you have any? Do you have any? Could you take your hand out of your pocket when you're talking? All right, all right. <laughs> Please! Actually, can I just say, um, Paul, that I'm left-handed as well, and I know it's got a big bandage on your left hand. What do you do for, um, you know... What, the old fired knuckle? <clears throat> yeah, all right, then. I was going to mention that, but if you want to put it like that, yes, yeah, that's fine. What do you do for that, then? Well, it's obviously out of action at the moment. I can't do much with his left hand, but uh, I've got someone retained on a part-time basis. Oh, really? <laughs> I suppose Frank Bruner needs to work, doesn't he, now? The <laughs> well, well, well. We're not going down that road, are we, surely? Yeah. But, you know, we, you know, bandages are a part of sports. Sometimes you have to get an injury. Yeah. You know, that's how it goes. Uh, <laughs> I remember you, Gary, with your little bandage playing for England, you know, yeah. on the field, with your bandage, Captain Marvel. Oh. Little bandage, you get a cock sprain or something. <laughs> <laughs> the trainer comes on rummaging through his bag going, I've got a corn plaster in here somewhere. <laughs> There's one difference, sir. When I had my bandage, which was on my wrist in 86, I carried on. Didn't have a few months off. What's wrong with you? You're soft. <laughs> I wouldn't take that order. Gary, Gary, Gary. <clears throat> I throw a big no, I was looking at Nick. I was, I was, I was looking <laughs> at right past you. <laughs> when you said Nick, when you had your injury, you carried on. You carried on doing what, Gary? <laughs> Sort of hanging around the, the goal. The goal. <laughs> <laughs> Oldly, could I be the first to sign your cast? Could I do a little picture? When you was a schoolboy, we used to have all things written on your hands when you broke around. We're adults now, Jonathan. We don't need to do that. Now. I was in a cast <laughs> up to my neck. I didn't only have that problem. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Will you be in a cast again if you're not? Yeah, I'm sure. Only <laughs> 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 oh, next time, let's have it from the neck up. <laughs> Gary! <laughs> so the question is, what, that, why is David Simon got a ponytail? Is it, um, just it got in his eyes and... Yeah, I'll give you three points for that, and that's one of the reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Thanks, sir, sir. I have a feeling, do I get an extra point if I say, I think, he, as a joke, he grew it because Emmanuel Petit had left. That's true as well, but you don't, you don't get an extra point. <laughs> Here's David <laughs> Seaman's own personal hairstylist, Errol Douglas, to provide the answer. <laughs> Reasons why David Siemens got his hair in a ponytail. Number one, his French teammates missed Emmanuel Petit. Number two, he's very lucky to have his hair at 37 so long. And number three, it keeps it out of his eyes. David Seaman is famously a keen angler and says he identifies with each and every fish that struggles on his line. He too struggles on his line before flapping helplessly in the net. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David Seaman have three points and Gary's team have three points. teams try to work out who on the other side is speaking the truth and who are lying like there's no tomorrow. David's team, it's our very own Audley Harrison for you. Here he is winning golf for Britain against the big Kazakhstani with the unpronounceable name. Harrison comes back. He's really in style. He's only become the fourth boxer to pass the 30 points mark. The points don't matter. The victory matters. The gold medal is Audley Harrison's. Now, Audley here has a rather unusual way of preparing himself for a big fight, but what is it, Gary's team? <laughs> I prepare for fights by listening to Japanese classical music. Audley prepares for fights by enacting the bout with two action men. You wuss. <laughs> <laughs> Audley prepares for fights by watching old episodes of Doctor Who on video. Uh, so, does Audley psych himself up for bouts by listening to Japanese classical music? playing with a couple of action men or watching Doctor Who, David's team. Well, you imagine Gary would be the expert on Japanese classical music, wouldn't you? Because he spent an awful lot of time not really playing football mm. in Japan, so he must have done something to pass the time, sure. So you must be an expert on, what, Pakistani music, West Indian music, <laughs> Australian music? 
So you're talking about the dolls, actual yeah. men dolls. Actual men, yeah. There's a Frank Bruno doll. Which one's bigger? As well now. Is that? Comes with a assorted costumes. Um, Dick Whittington. <laughs> <laughs> you have an actual man, David? What? They probably didn't have in your day. No, did we you? had the Coldstream Guards in the West Wing. That was us. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Jonathan. One Christmas, I got an empty box. My dad said, Action Man Deserter. A welcome return yes. to the whole joke. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Where's your first pro fight going to be, Audrey? We're looking forward to it. When will it be? April. And will it be a proper fight? Or will it be, you know, when Frank Bruno used to box, and he used to put him up against, like, a whatever chef from the hotel kitchen they could find out <laughs> Yet to be decided. Yet to be decided. <laughs> You're not going to tell me anything, are you, Audrey? Well, it's good to talk, but you're not. <laughs> yeah. but, but not to me, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you might have a professional fight before that, might you? Yeah. 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 So yeah we're going to have a whip round so you can beat the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to have a whip round, I do it for free. <laughs> but your nickname in the wing of it is Audley Majestic Harrison, is that right? Majestic, yeah, that's yeah. the name that they're from. Is that, H-bomb well, is, you're, you're is that because of your he, masterful control of the, uh, no, he delivers the square wine. circle? Or is it because of your... <laughs> It can't be. It can't be the Japanese music. You're not a Japanese music type. I don't believe so. I like the action man. Would you so think you think? Keep it at home. Well, it's, we'll go for the action. You man, think that on. Gary was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> you fool. No. No way. Yeah. Audley, unsurprisingly, knew the truth. He does indeed get ready for fights by listening to Japanese classical music. <laughs> Audley Harrison once led a boxers' protest sit-in outside Parliament. It was meant to be a march, but every time Big Ben chimed, they all sat down and spat in a bucket. <laughs> Gary's team, your fact is about the Oscar-laden film, American Beauty. Smile, you're at Mr. Smiley's. Would you like to try our new beef and cheese pot pie on a stick, just $1.99 for a limited time only? We were just at a seminar. Uh, buddy, this is my... Her husband. We've met before, but something tells me you're going to remember me this time. Now, the director of that film, Sam Mendes, <coughs> has revealed that his directing method was inspired by what, David's team? American Beauty's direction was inspired by Sir Ranulph Fiennes' autobiography. American Beauty's direction was inspired by Mike Brearley's book on captaincy methods. American Beauty's direction was inspired by one of Will Carling's motivational courses. So, was Sam Mendes directing based on the methods of Sir Ranulph Fiennes, Mike Brearley or Will Carling, Gary's team? Has anyone here not seen American Beauty? Oh, quite a few of you. It's a great film. It's got a fantastic ending as well when Kevin Spacey gets shot by the gay... It takes you completely by surprise. It? It really is... <laughs> Go and see it. I mean, I think it's inspired quite a few famous films, hasn't it? The Longest Day was one of them. <laughs> the Umpire Strikes was... Back. Oh. Oh, David Gower's Grief in Cow. <laughs> it could be uh, Will Carling. What do you think about Will Carling? I was going to do that motivational, I don't know. that motivational course that he was running. Where? Yeah, I couldn't be bothered though, but I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I didn't think about it. I think Sam Mendes is a big cricket fan. I think it's probably the Mike Brearley book. OK, well, let's think. You thought that David said the truth. Yep. Let's see if you're right. Yes. <laughs> yes, David was right. Mike Brearley's tone, the art of captaincy, was Sam Mendes' inspiration for American beauty. For instance, treat every person differently. Some actors need encouragement, others need simplifying, like cricketers. <laughs> While filming in Australia last year, Sam Mendes persuaded Tom Cruise into becoming a cricket fan. Cruise eventually hired a box at the Sydney Cricket Ground so that he could stand on it and watch the game. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have six. Oh, Time now for that round where I ask the question, what's going on? David's team, clock this. <laughs> so, what was going on there? And in particular, how do you account for the words that were written on the body? 
She was looking, wasn't she? She was looking, definitely. She was not coyly hiding behind that towel one little bit, was no she? No way. Nope. She's seen it all in the ladies' locker room before, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I personally think it's pathetic, someone who shows off their body to get attention, or maybe a cheap laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like your weekly peak now, Nick? No, thank you. <laughs> Do you know um, Pete Sanford Street once? A ranger from Chessington got him with a tranquilizer dart. <laughs> a lovely picture. <laughs> Looks to me like he's got a topspin lob on. <laughs> You've got an orthodox spin, is that right? Yeah, I don't throw it, yeah. I thought an orthodox spin was what you found in the Jewish washing machine. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> or is this a glimpse of the future? This tennis on Channel 5, hosted by Keith Chegwin. <laughs> she got involved, didn't she, in an advertising campaign? Mm -hmm. For, what was it, Burley Bras? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was the slogan? I'll give you three points for that, yeah. It's an <laughs> That was Britain's serial sports streaker Mark Roberts, who's appeared naked at 156 major sports events. Here he is back at Wimbledon to explain his slogan. While I was in the queue waiting to go in to Core 14, where Anna was playing, a van went past with a logo on the side of it with a bra advert saying, only the balls should bounce. And I thought it was very apt for me to have only the balls bounce, which I wrote on my chest in the toilets. And then when I was in there, they shouted, new balls, please, as she was playing. And that was my cue to go on. <laughs> Robert says he streaks in order to earn a living. He's made plenty of money, but he's got nowhere to put it. <laughs> Gary's team, take a look at this. I remember this. It's when we made the mistake of letting Mark Lawrenson produce Match of the Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's not proper dancing, though, is it? It's not what I call dancing. I mean, there's no pole, there are no punters with fivers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just terrible. <laughs> it's not Gary's new crisp advert, is it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fighting <laughs> talk. What a fight. We want to see a fight down later. Oh, fight, 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 fight. To us. Jonathan, call him a puff to his face oh, now. No. Come on. <laughs> By the pendulous right. packs of Montgomery, look at the size of him. <laughs> You're a super heavyweight, aren't you? Only. Super heavyweight, yeah. As Never. an amateur super heavyweight. And what weight is that and above? What sort of size? Uh, 13 stone, 7. Oh, blind, what am I then? <laughs> <laughs> super de duper heavyweight. It looks to me like a sort of um, deep juxtaposition of the physicality and muscularity of and the pace and yeah, movement of football against the delicacy and suppleness of ballet probably it's probably Norwegian or Swedish I'm looking at it Norwegian very good three points yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> that stinks of cheating that does the waft of cheating going on yeah, there. It's obvious that's Scandinavian, isn't yeah, it? All right, then. That was a tribute to the art of football by the Norwegian National Ballet at the ICA <laughs> in London. It's been attacked for being too camp, but they still beat England 3-0. <laughs> a host of celebrities were invited to the launch party, but Gary Lineker didn't go because it was too rough. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ballet was disturbed by unruly elements in the opening night crowd. A bunch of Swan Lake fans forced their way into the nutcracker end. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have nine. <laughs> Time now for our regulars to fondle a mystery person as we play Field the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're first this week. Would you like oh, to take was. your positions? Ashley, can I ask you another cricketing question? Certainly, yeah. Do you go for a one day or a five day? Five day. More engrossing. Well, I was actually really asking about travel cards, but... <laughs> <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? OK, and your time starts now. Oh, what's that? 
Was that strange? <laughs> 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 Jonathan. Jonathan. very hairy with a blindfold on. <laughs> you wore these last week, didn't you, Jonathan? <laughs> What's... I feel very much at home. Can I just stand here for about... Oh, hang on. Oh, 90 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Hello. You have a good Christmas? <laughs> I think Christmas is getting too commercial oh. this year. Do you? You didn't get the, um, the thing that's all over oh. video, did you? Keep still! <laughs> is there anything over here? <laughs> oh, hang oh. on. <laughs> You go over there. There's a completely, there's a completely naked woman over there, Gary. <laughs> However, this is just grown hair very quickly. Sorry, I can't hear over it's, this racket. It must be. <laughs> I'm waiting on a lamp post at the corner of the street. Name? Simon Archer. Yes, good, good, good. Good, well done, Simon Archer. Joe, good, yes, very good. OK, David and Jonathan, if you'd like to take your positions, please. I see, Nick, before we go, you oh, left that with us. I, uh, it's so nice to I left that. that at your house. You left that at our house when you stayed in the summer. Do you mind? Um, Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> My daughter would be very pleased to get that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah You're not yeah, as yeah. pleased as I am. <laughs> <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest? <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, She's David. gorgeous! <laughs> Remember our deal, David. If it's Anna Kornikova, leave her to me, OK? <laughs> OK, and your time starts now. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> Is it a swimmer? I'll check for slippers. Yeah, but there we go. I used to get these nasty feelings about things. I'm not sure whether I'm going to play anymore, to be honest with you. Come on, on Larry. Get in there. Oh, no, Where no, is no, it? no, no, it's... Oh, it's far too tasty. Oh, what's that? What? Oh, what is it? So good. Yeah, I'll back on. Where is it? Where are you, David? Come on, David, help me out here, will you? No, just, just feel... Oh, get on. Just... Just I feel dare. free to pass on any information you've found. Wait, wait, wait. That's you. I'm going to save that. Please. So, what's that smell? Is that... <laughs> Julie, why is this... Oh, no. It was, in fact, Mark Robert! Oh! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Do you mind if I keep this on? <laughs> You weren't going below that chin, were you? <laughs> that is exactly the kind of thing my mum would say to happen to me if I got in the show business. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have 12. I've been 40 years avoiding that kind of thing. <laughs> Can you believe, like, he didn't even buy me a drink or ask my name. <laughs> he hasn't given me his number. <laughs> he says he'll call, who knows? We <laughs> hobble to the finishing post by playing the name game. The leaders goes first, which is Gary's team. Can you pass those along to Rory, please, Audley? Thank you. <laughs> as many names as you can. <laughs> In 90 seconds, starting <laughs> now. Um, and what would you have done, big boy? boy? Pay attention. Go, go. Um, Run away. <laughs> uh, you see, Wimbledon manager's been sacked from Barnsley recently. Dave Bassett. Uh, correct. It's First name mundane. is like a, a rubber contraceptive. Johnny. And it's what knight in this stuff used to wear? Armour. Very good, Johnny Armour. Now, this is um, an ex-chef from Lords who... Ainsley Harriet. Very good. 
Was it? Oh, well, if you got it wrong, I wouldn't say very good, Gary. <laughs> the wrong bleeding answer. No, we, we do have to say that to Gary when he gets okay. the <laughs> uh, This is a British swimmer. First name sounds like that sitcom you like that's set in holiday camp. Heidi. Uh, Heidi. Uh, Heidi. Uh, Heidi. Uh, Heidi. Uh, up. Heidi up. Up. He's good. He's better than you. Well, this is, <laughs> this is the bloke. Oh, I've got a good mind for this, but no, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> this is a Kaz Kazakhstani uh, oh. boxer called... Dubektikov. Lustakhan Dubektikov. Yeah, oh, and you can have that. That's yeah. close enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, oh, this is something, is a Guinean footballer, and this is something you have on your kitchen floor, getting up sex with the au pair. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sort of polyvinyl covering. Is this? Abbreviating. Poly. Okay, you need 12 to win. Okay, okay, and the time starts now. When Jeff Boycott was in court, they said, This young lady said you struck her by the head. Did you? Whacker. That's right, the first name. Whacker Eunice. Se Whacker Eunice, well done there. Okay, second name, used to be a boys' band. Mean. Three good looking young boys. Uh, oh, um, uh, something and Gretel, there's a story. Uh, Hansel, yeah. Hansel. Yeah, and it's close to that, but it's not quite. He presents Max to the day with old Jug ears over there. Oh, uh, Hansel. Yeah, there you go, thank you. Okay, uh, this, is, uh, this was a famous cathedral. It's a lovely, uh, it's a lovely plain. It's beautiful. Uh, Salisbury. He's... In Salisbury. Oh, wow, you're on fire tonight, I'm telling you. No wonder you won, so you could learn from him. Um, <laughs> if you're preaching the good word of the good book and you go around, then you are like Billy Graham. You are an... an... Evangelist. And if you're a Spanish Evangelist. one... Yeah, Evangelist. 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 Okay. And now I'm going to try and keep this clean. Um, <laughs> in Le Mans, they have motorcycle racing, and this is what they call it. Okay. TT is a... TT, yeah. correct. And the second name Sierra is... Sierra Man. Sierra Man. And uh, Le Mans. You got it. And, uh, <laughs> and the second name, it's an American car. Chevy. Kamara, well done. OK. Um, <laughs> This one is, uh, he's, uh, have you seen the advert where they go to the ambassador's party and he gives out the little gold chocolates? Ferrero Rocher, say well, it. Well, say it, say it first for me. Part Ferrero, Ferrero Rocher, say it for me, please. Rocher, OK. <laughs> and uh, the middle name is, remember the jackal, the terrorist, his name was? Uh, Carlos. That's right, and the first name is, is Spanish for one. Juan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very good. The old one. So at the end of the game, David's team have 12 <laughs> points and Gary's team have 17. But, oh. but, just before Christmas, Rory was sadly caught <laughs> trying to bribe Again. our auto cue girl with champagne to give him the answers. But he's learnt his lesson. Champagne doesn't work, and neither Rory does money. Here's Katie, our new guest booker. <laughs> it was my first week on the show, and Rory offered me a large sum of money. Thankfully, it was only the names of the mystery guests he wanted. <laughs> That was Katie, our guest booker. This is Rory, our loser, disqualified again. And that's David Team, our winners. <laughs> so our thanks to Gary, Rory and Audley, David, Jonathan and Ashley. We're all off to bribe Rory not to do a streak. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. <laughs>